Hello, my name is Manuel Blechschmidt. I'm the CEO of ServiceLs ARX GmbH and in this video I'm going to show you how you get the medication list PDF from the EPA for all uh, electronic health record system, how it is specified for the commandic. So let's reload this page and now in the background our EPA for all client, which is open source, is doing lots of stuff and then in the end it returns the medication list. As you can see at the moment it's still a blank PDF but hopefully this will change soon. So let's start with some theory. I'm running a Quarkus server on my laptop. Um, and Quarkus is just our favorite Java framework. It's Java EE, um, yeah, like, like, like the successor of, of Java EE. It is a little bit more complex like this, but for uh, the EPA for implementation, it doesn't really matter. Then we have a fire resource on it. and. Uh, also lots of other stuff that I will show later. Then we have uh, a connector. In our particular case it's a SQLnet connector and um, there is an eHealth card terminal. Uh, in our particular case it's in uh, Orga 6141 and in this Orga there is an EGK. Actually there are multiple EGKs in it but uh, for this demo uh, one is uh, important. And uh, there is a connection between it. Uh, and there is also an SMCB in this car terminal. And I'm going to show you this later when this is important. So, so this is not this, but it has to be an interface. Uh, yeah, for the curious people here, the communication between the connector and the EL car terminal, it's a SICCT protocol. Uh, but uh, this is not important knowledge for uh, the EPA backends. And this year it's it's a SOAP SOAP interface. Um, the fire system is competing with the, with the SOAP interface, uh, and we have more components here. So this is not the direct connection, but, but I will explain this later. Then now we have uh, the telematic infrastructure. In our particular case, we have the RU, and in this RU we have multiple uh, systems. Uh, so we have multiple uh, electronic patient record backends. Um, let's make it a little bigger. At the moment we have two. We have one from IBM and one from RISE. Let me just check this. So this is the one from, I think it's from IBM. And the other one is from RISE. I'm, I'm at the moment not 100% sure about the numbers, but uh, this is also at the moment not that important. So this one is from IBM and this one is from, from RISE. And and what's important, so if, if you uh, take this URL and put it in the browser, for normal uh, persons it won't work, but in my setup it will. So uh, what you will see here, uh, that there was an invalid response, which is... Uh, Normally it, sh it should, should respawn, so let's try this on the command line. Um, curl, okay. Here you go, so you get a 404 error. Um, this is this is what, what the system uh, returns. And I also get a similar response if I go to the other system. So this also returns 404, but the whole page. Um, they, they are not using normal valid certificates, so the certificates that they are using, um, they are based on the certificates that are signed by the uh, telematic infrastructure uh, trusted uh, CA list, which is this one here. Um, you have to check this, and you have to also build a trust store that contains these uh, certificates. Um, uh, and, and at the moment what I did is I just imported the uh, CA55 uh, certificate into my trust store, but I won't show this in this video. So these are the uh, EPAs. You will need a um, uh, connector to route to these systems. So I will show this. So if you do an NS lookup, you will find that these systems have private IP addresses. And then if you do a trace route, what you will see is that my system at first goes to my Fritzbox, then it goes to my ZikoNet connector, then it goes somewhere else, and then in the end it goes to this uh, electronic health, health record system. And um, this, you, you have to configure your network that this works. But most of you should already know this. So now we have this, and we have this system here. And what it's doing, when you have the EGCAM, and 
you want to find uh, which file, uh, which system is the correct one, then you have to do the following. So this is so you you, you have you have to have a list of these systems in your implementation, and uh, first you have to get the versichert number of of the EGK. and you normally do this by uh, reading. Uh, by using the read VSD function on the connector. So in our particular case, we have a server th service that's called VSD service, and uh, we are calling the read VSD function on the connector. The read VSD function gives us the whole ADK, and then we get lots of uh, data back. It's base64 encoded, and it's gzipped, and we unzip it, and we parse the XML of that in, in there, and in the end, we get the the, the number of um, uh, the the um, Versicherten number, versicherten ID or insurance ID of the of the person. So the insurance ID. Then, if we have this insurance ID, we have to ask the information service of these EPAS. Information service. So there's one information service, and there's another one. So uh, here's another one, and this is the only service that, that I will paint for rice, because my particular uh, uh, patient has an ID in the first system. So what we're doing is we are sending the insurance ID insurance ID to this information service and if this EPA system if it has a file for this particular ID it returns it to 201. And also one important note this information service it's not FAO protected. So I, I will I will talk about the FAO in, in a minute. So okay so now we have found that this IBM system is the correct one. So now, what do we have to do? Um, actually, there are other services, but these other services, they are file protected. So there is a layer, it's called file. And we implemented this layer on our side as well. Um, so there's also our other services. They have a FAU layer. And FAU stands for uh, Trusted Execution Environment. In German, it's Vertrauenswürdige Ausführungsabgebung. And you have to to build an, um, a connection between us and this file. Uh, you have to implement a special um, key exchange uh, protocol, which is called Kyber 678. Um, and it, it's doing lots of star smart stuff there. Uh, we did this. You have to do this as, as well. Behind this file, there are multiple services. So in our particular case, one important service is the auth authorization service. Authorization service, and the other one, which is important for us, it's the medication service. Okay, so basically our fire resource here, so basically it works like this. So our fire resource, uh, first it gets the insurance ID. Through this, and then the next thing that happens, uh, it gets a so-called uh, NP, which is German for Nutzer Pseudonym. In English, it would be like something like user session. So it's a user session for the file. Uh, let me also add this data that's found here. So here you have first um, the insurance ID. So the insurance ID is on the on the on the card. Insurance ID, and this is uh, get by the fire resource. And after after you read this from this EGK, so let me so the insurance ID is part of the EGK. It's a little more complex than this, but long story short, you can read this insurance ID from the EGK. And remember, you do this by using the read VSD. Uh, operation from the VSD service running as a SOAP service on the connector. And, and how to connect to the connector, it's a whole other story. You will need SSL certificates, uh, you need context types and all this stuff. I'm not going to talk about this in this video. Um, so we have the insurance ID, we do a lookup, we found that this EPA AS1 is the correct uh, EPA for us, electronic pulse record for us. Then the next thing is, we are using the IDP client which will need the insurance ID and uh, the FAO client and it will also talk 
to the IDP. What it is doing in detail, I already explained this in another video. So there's also the IDP as well. Let's put the IDP here. So the IDP is also uh, in the telematic infrastructure. Uh, yeah, for completeness, the IDP has the URL IDP ref ref. So this this is the IDP here. So it's hosted by Rise. So uh, for the ones who uh, have issues with it, you can try to contact Rise because they are hosting the systems. But they are some constraint by the Gamatic. So officially, the Gamatic is responsible for this. So here, this particular service has, in my case, this URL. Uh, you can see that here it says dev, here it says ref. So basically, there are two kinds of, of, of development environments in the RU. One is called dev, the other one is called ref. Uh, and sometimes they work together, sometimes not. So it's depending on uh, on the system you're currently talking about. So typically, these, these systems are also called RU dev. Uh, okay, so we have the insurance ID, we have the IDP client, we have the V client. This IDP client, it talks to the authorization, authorization service, so this one here. And it goes through the V. And this is super complex. So, so the first call to the author, authorization service, it will do a Kyber key exchange dance. So this Kyber key exchange dance, I won't go into the details, but in the end there is a... a Shared secret bet between our V client and between the V client here in in in, in the EPA. Uh, so there's secret. I'm, I'm I'm at the moment I'm not sure how, how these secrets are called in the specification. So uh, feel free to put this in a comment and tell tell me how it's called in the in the uh, uh, in the specification. It should be something like session keys or something like this. So uh, this is this is how this is typically called. Uh, yeah, so let's try to call it session key. Session key, uh, and and it's it's uh, so it's kind of a Diffie-Hellman key exchange, and these session keys are typical AES 128 or two 256 uh, uh, keys. And this and normally you also you don't do this by your own, but you just take an implementation that already does this. So in our particular case, we took the lib file from the Gamatic. Okay, so we have the IDP client, we have the V client, we have the V connection, we made this complex Kyber dance, and we are also talking to the IDP. So uh, let's take, uh, let's paint this here. And the IDP, so the I IDP, um, it talks kind of OpenID Connect. So why do I say kind of? Because this OpenID Connect, it's specially hardened. So normally you would ex normally if you do this you you just um, uh, you just expect that the um, key is uh, th that you normally do a normal OpenID authorization flow, um, but this 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 thing is specially hardened. So for example, what it's doing it's also encrypting um, the JWT keys, and also during this dance here the SMCB is used. So here's an SMCB. SMCB is a special smart card uh, that represents an uh, identity of an organization. So for example, a hospital or, or a normal doctor's practice. And there is a function on this SMCB, it's called external authenticate. And with this external authenticate function, you can uh, prove that you are uh, the owner of the odd certificate, which is on the SMCB. So also, uh, what you should know is there is a certificate including a private key on this card, and this this one is called C out. And you have to read this this certificate and send it to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the um, IDP. And also, you have to use a function which is called external authenticate. I, I will just paint it here. So there is, uh, I will just see it's external authenticate. Uh, External authenticate. So this is this external authenticate function, and also because this is not complex enough, actually there's not only one C auth certificate. Actually there are two because one is using RSA and the other one is using ECC, 
Um, the good news is at the moment still both are working, but this is going to change in 2025 because the BSI said RSA is not good enough anymore. Um, but for the moment, let's expect there's just one CR certificate. So you do this quite complex open ID connect dance between your IDP client and the IDP client and the authorization service. And then in the end, if you do it, did all that, you get an NP, here you go. So this is, and it's English is for a user pseudonym. It's kind of like an uh, v, v session. So, um, and this is an authenticated V session. So if you have this 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 NP, um, it gives you the possibility to talk uh, to, to the V. And now what you do is, you take this V session key and you put it into an HTTP uh, header uh, that, that, that goes to the medication service. So uh, basically what you do is, uh, and this is now a fire request. So you already recognize there is SOAP, there is REST, there is um, uh, OpenID Connect. So basically, basically there, there's every, there's Space64 uh, uh, connections, there's normal TCP IP stuff. So basically you have to know everything, what, what, what it's poss possibly necessary to know about the network. And now the next thing, what you have to know is, um, you have to uh, do this fire request, and this fire request, it's the, actually, it's, it's so, so the, the, the request looks like this, so a foul request. You have the outer foul request, outer foul request, and it's an, it's an HTTP request, so it's actually, it's HTTP, and then you have an inner foul request. So there's an inner foul request. And it's actually it's an encrypted inner file request. And then in this encrypted inner file request, there is uh, actually there there are two things. So one thing is there is this this file request which is just a normal get on the medication resource. So fire uh, get medication, which is HTTP medication. And then also the important thing there is the there there is the NP as HTTP header, so there is uh, NP. So uh, let's put this here. So this goes from uh, this guy. Uh, so this is this this is sending this request. And goes to the file. So and and this is this would be if, if we want to have the fire data, but in our particular case we want to have the uh, not the fire data, but, but we want to have the um, the PDF. But it still it still comes from the medication service. So the medication service has uh, different kinds of of APIs. One API is being able to send us a PDF back. So this would be the fire request, but we also get the PDF. So, and if you did all that, uh, the system will respond to you with a medication PDF. So, this is how you look at that. And then you have the patient. Or actually, you have the doctor. So this is this is basically for the doctor. So we 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 are in Lysoxo, you know? and this medication PDF. So this PDF here, it goes to the doctor. Easy. Hmm? Okay. So now I will walk you through the steps in code. So here we have our medication list. So first, I'm showing you I have a connector and. Uh, let me just log in here. Uh, and here are all the cards. So in our particular case, I'm going to use this EGK. So it's Elisabeth Sophie Adelheid, Griffin Anger, man. She has an IBM uh, electronic health record file. And the SMCB that is used, I think it's this one or this one. Don't know. Doesn't matter. So for our particular use case, it doesn't matter if you're a pharmacy or an hospital. Um, and uh, now let's go. So this is this is the fire uh, the fire resource here, and if you look into our source code, it's part of the REST server, and I'm going to put a breakpoint here. 
So uh, let's reload. And now what I will do is I will try to split my split my screen a little bit so that you can see the painting and uh, the uh, code at the same time. So okay, so w w we are now here, and this is the part where we are getting the insurance ID from the EVK. So uh, yeah, let's go into the fire service. Um, here we go. Is the client? So actually, let's just go into the. It's the service. And make sure this was this is our service. And let me go, go to get here. Uh, oh, sorry, I I I missed the breakpoint. So let's let's start again over and let's uh, do this again. So there's a fire breakpoint and sorry, uh, let's reload again. So we are starting in this fire function and now I want to show you how to get this insurance ID. I want to show you how this VSD service works. So now we are stuck in the VSD service and what we are basically doing is we are doing this read VSD function and we can go into the function um, and we are getting the correct uh, connector. So in our particular case we can talk to multiple connectors and because I didn't specify a card it's uh, getting all the cards and it's taking the first card. And you can see here it's the EGK handle so it's EGK 5.1. I don't know what EGK this is but it's one that we need. Then we also need an SCB handle. Same logic here. It's putting out the infos. Then we are generating a random user ID. We get the context. Um, we, uh, in our particular case we're also getting some prescription, uh, subscription infos because we do the SCETP as well. But now comes the part that's important uh, to us. Uh, we are preparing a VSD request. And then uh, we are sending the, we are reading the request and we are returning the results. Um, and then we go here again. And what we are doing now is we are extracting the insurance ID. Uh, there, there are two ways to, to extract it. One way is getting it from the PN, P, PNW, uh, but this only works if there was really a Versichertenstammdaten applied. Uh, if, if there was an error, we have to get it from the card. If we're, there was no error, we can get it from the Versichertenstammdaten applied. Uh, in this particular case, there was no error. Uh, so what we can do is we can we can get it from the P PNW. And uh, technically, I think this we, we could always use this code, but uh, this works as well. Um, and 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 this also checks that this PNW thing is signed and the, that we can really use it as a as an entry for for the for the um, for the IPA. We we are asking this multiple times, so we, we did not optimize this yet. We are at the moment in this stage of optimizing. So uh, this will return the insurance ID. So let's put a breakpoint here and let's continue. And now we're here and now we have uh, the insurance ID. So it's X11048675. This is this number. So the whole code that you just saw was getting this insurance ID into this fire service. So next thing is we have to identify to which EPA we should talk. So what you can see here, we have this multi EPA service and we have this function get EPA API. And now let's go there. So multi EPA service. Let's put a breakpoint here in has uh, in get EPA API. So here and then let's go. Okay, so we have the different kind of values. Uh, and basically, if you hover over the IPA backend, you will find two. So the first one, it's the IPA is two, and the second one, it's the IPA is one. So actually, they are uh, reversed in our particular case. That doesn't matter. We are looping through them, and we are checking: Does this insurance ID for this RPE does it has an IPA record? And I, I will show you how this works. So there is an account information API, which is this information service, and it's not fault pro protected. Um, and we can uh, get a record status, and there are two ways. One way is it works, then there is an EPA. The other way is we get a, a 400 or 404, then it does not work. So let's check what the EPA. Uh, I think this this one should should uh, end up in an exception. Let's see if I'm right. Boom. Yeah, it's an exception. So it's not. Uh, so the EPA RP2 is not our RP, and you can see here that there was a 404. And now let's go to the one system, first system. Uh, yeah, so this is result false. And now let's check for the next system. 
here you can see we should get 200, uh, 204. So 204, it's the HTTP code for uh, no result, but success. So this one is the EPA that we want to have. And therefore we are going to return this EPA and that's the EPA that we are going to use. So let's continue here. So we, if there is no EPA API at all, it typically means that the person uh, did not consent for having an EPA. So this is also what you will find here. So now what we need is we need this NP. So uh, we need this particular thing here. Um, I, I, I would just show you this. This is super complex stuff. So there, there's really lots of stuff happening. I created a video for this. Uh, the cool thing here is I, I can just do a step over and we will be here and this NP will be here. Uh, actually implementing, getting this 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 Nutzer pseudonym, getting this user pseudonym or this user, or this file session, it takes like four weeks. So, uh, but for us, it will just work and it will be just next step. Um, there, uh, there, there, there is some, some optimization missing. So therefore, uh, uh, it just, it, when, when it's asking for the EPA RPE, uh, it's going multiple times to the process of checking the EPA. We are working on it. So now we have this NP. Yeah. So this is the uh, session. So this session here. And this session has to be put in the inner V request, which is here. And um, I can show you this in the render client. So the render client is the, the name of, of the class that, that we are using for the PDF bytes. So, and uh, let's check the render, render client, render client. Uh, it's the V render client, see here, this one. And there is the abstract render client. And in the abstract render client, there is this uh, get PDF bytes. And now let's go in there. Oh, render client. Uh, let's add this lookup for this particular source code. Uh, the render client should be part of the medication. So I think so. Let's check. So it should be okay. Yeah, there it is. Uh, now here you can see that that's saving internally the Nutzer no, no pseudonym, and then there's a function get PDF files, and you can still see that our entry is the insurance ID. Here's the user agent. Uh, we are. We have a client ID, but we are not using it yet. Good news is it still works. And now here is here's the, the, the execute function. And this execute function, it basically, uh, yeah, we can go in there. So let's go in there. Um, we get the ma medication service render, which is this one. This one comes comes from the open RPE specification. And this one is V protected. So you can see here that it's the normal URL. Um, and we implemented our V stuff with with um, with interceptors. So feel free to check this out. Uh, I think this was quite a smart way how we do it. But feel free to, to do it in other ways. And now uh, we have the render URI. Then we prepare the habit headers. And here you can see here is the V NP. So this one is super important. Uh, and now we have all these headers. So if I hover over the headers, there are all the headers. And this one is important. This is important. Uh, and now it's executed. And this response now it returns the the PDF or uh, the, the bytes of the PDF. And I can just continue. And this will return this medication list. And and this is how you do it. So quite easy. Um, this has to work for all the German Leistungserbringer starting at the 15th February in whole Germany. And our, our system is open source, it's GPL. So you're not allowed to copy and paste the, the, our code and put it in your commercial product. But we are, we are uh, so we give out commercial licenses. Uh, we, we, uh, we're giving support out of this and you can, so you can read it and, and then, then write it on your own. But also feel free to contact us for a commercial license. I hope this helps you. And I hope that we get this running uh, uh, on the official dates. So this is a working implementation, and I think there are uh, two and a half months left uh, to get all this implemented. I think this should work. Thanks a lot. My name was Manuel Blechschmidt, and I'm the CEO of Service Health Eric's GmbH.